Hey guys, FutureMan19 here, and I have another amazing cryptic article put out by our friends at the Large Hadron Collider at CERN in Switzerland that I will be going over and decoding for you. Every now and then, CERN will release to the public these strangely themed articles that seem to be worded in a very unusual way. Now the name of their most recent article is titled, Hunting Season at the LHC, and I have noticed that most publications that CERN puts out are usually very scientific and straightforward in those respects. But if you're paying close attention, you will be able to catch some of these cleverly made articles that seem to be masking a hidden meaning behind it all. So let's go ahead and read the article. With the LHC now back smashing protons together at an energy of 13 TeV, which stands for 13 trillion tera electron volts, what exotic beasts do physicists hope to find in this unfamiliar corner of the natural world? Okay, let's stop right here. CERN asks us the question, what exotic beasts do physicists hope to find in this unfamiliar corner of the natural world? This is so typical of CERN. They think what they are doing is so funny that they are constantly mocking us. They mock us in their videos that they put out, they mock us in their articles, and more importantly, they are always mocking God. They always seem to write these articles in a very whimsical fancy, like it's a big joke to them. Like when in a cartoon, when the mad scientist starts laughing maniacally when he is about to perform his crazy experiments. So like in the last article that I explained in my Spirit Wars series, where they were naming these unknown particles found in their large hydrogen collider known as UFOs, which are unidentified falling objects, and ULOs, as unidentified lying objects. And then they release these creepy images of their beams from the LHC as if to showcase what they are in fact doing, which is releasing fallen angels or discarnate entities from the abyss. And I'm going to explain what I mean by this. So now in this current article, they are stating that they are hunting for exotic beasts in unfamiliar corners from our natural world. I have already gone over how the LHC is without a doubt mankind's greatest achievement. It can be likened to as our modern day Tower of Babel. We built it either out of spite or vanity with the underlying theme that there is no God so we will figure out how to recreate the universe ourselves or in other words create our own heaven just like what the Tower of Babel people were trying to accomplish by cheating their way up to heaven with a man-made staircase within a tower so tall that they could reach heaven without God's help or judgment. And to further illustrate this point, who was the Tower of Babel's infamous leader? It was a man named Nimrod, and the only description that we have on him was that he was a mighty hunter. Are you guys following me on this yet? So let's start over it again. CERN is located in Geneva, which could be another name for Genesis, which is the first book in the Bible about the creation of the universe which CERN is trying to do themselves by recreating the factors involved with the Big Bang or the beginning of the creation of the universe. Also found in the book of Genesis is the story of the Tower of Babel, which was about a civilization that got so idolatrous and wicked that they believed that they could reach heaven by building something that could get them there, basically cir circumventing God's laws. The legend goes on to say that it was a building tall enough to reach heaven, but who knows what it actually was. It could just be symbolic for a structure or technology that man had built to get into heaven. And their leader, Nimrod, was also known as a mighty hunter, which this article is so clearly stating that the people at CERN themselves believe that they are mighty hunters as well. And there is a theory that I have come across recently that explains that the LHC is actually what they call a stargate or a gateway and is connected to the constellation of Orion, which coincidentally is also known as a mighty hunter. This is a whole new theory that I wish to explore in the future in a later video for you guys. So stay tuned about that because it's a rather incredible theory. But anyways, and we also have found out that CERN is actually built upon the old temple grounds of Apollo, which is a part of Saint Poulet, France. And this refers to the verse in Revelation about them having a king over them that was named Apollyon and Abaddon, which translates to the destroyer. And to further illustrate this point, CERN's own mascot that is sitting directly in front of their building, and they are not even shy about it, 
is named Shiva, which is also known as the Destroyer. And I find it odd that on Google Maps, this location is known as a place of worship. And I will also be showing in my next video on how Orion is also connected to NASA and their Apollo missions and how the LHC and NASA are actually working together for their greater purpose and hidden agendas. And we all know that CERN is most widely recognized for their discovery of the Higgs boson, aka the God particle, in 2012, the same year as the end of the Mayan calendar date. And like I have said before, this is how they mock God. They say, oh, this little particle was at the very beginning of creation of the universe, so it must be God. And to further mock him, they search even deeper into the abyss of what is known as dark matter, like a magician pulling a rabbit out of his hat to try and release other particles, or what they are referring to in this article as exotic beasts. People don't really understand, and I know this is hard to imagine, but hear me out for a minute. I believe that when the universe was initially created, there were many particles in play. You can say that there was a God particle that organized all the other particles, but there were some that were not needed anymore or were only initially needed and were possibly causing disruptions in the space-time continuum or were particles that had the power to ultimately lead to the destruction of the entire universe. These particles might actually be God's way to have kind of like a self-destruct button to destroy the universe if needs be. And I know this sounds far-fetched, but if you actually study quantum physics, you will learn that even how one tiny atom can influence all other atoms around it. This is called supersymmetry, and CERN has achieved it with their quantum computers. So imagine this. The LHC smashes trillions and trillions of atoms together every time they run their machine. What kind of effects do you think this would cause to the fabric of our universe and to the space-time continuum? Have you ever heard of the Mandela effect? I believe that all this particle smashing that the LHC has been doing is the direct cause of it. Every time a particle smashes together and in the process becomes annihilated, it sends a ripple, like in a pond or a lake, through the very fabric of our universe and actually changes our history as we know it. And if you don't believe me, go ahead and study the Mandela effect. There are literally hundreds of thousands of people who have been affected and no one can explain what is happening to their memories or what they had thought had happened. People are losing their minds because they could have sworn something was this way before, but now it has changed, even in a blink of an eye, and it all has to do with what CERN is doing. In Genesis, the first book of the Bible, it states that, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And in the evening and the morning were the first day. So we know that darkness came first. And who are the rulers of the night? The devil and his fallen angels. And this is why the devil believes that he was God's firstborn and should have been chosen to inherit the kingdom and his throne. This is why there was a war in heaven and still continues to this day. This war has lasted for aeons and the battlefield now rages upon our own little planet. Because darkness feels like he was betrayed by his twin brother, the light, who we know as Christ, and seeks to remove him from the throne of God. This kind of sounds like a Game of Thrones episode, doesn't it? This is why monarchies were one of the very first ways people were governed and how kings believed that their firstborn sons should inherit the throne but we see that this way is old and outdated because it doesn't ever turn out the way we would like it to. You see, this is the very continuance of the war in heaven being played out in our day and age. You can take anything about this world and find a duality about it. The light and the dark, male and female, up and down, nothing and everything. And notice even the word, duality, because it is the clashing of the light and the darkness that are constantly in fight over who is to rule. And on the other side of our world lies what Stranger Things calls the Upside Down and what CERN has named the Hidden Valley that is filled with antimatter and dark matter. That is their world. This is their universe. It is dark and scary and nobody is trying to be there. Trust me. So they try and fight to take over ours. 
This is what they have been doing for centuries and have been doing for millennia. So what is CERN up to? Because you know which side they are rooting for when they are messing with antimatter, releasing dark matter, and opening up black holes, or as the Bible calls it, a bottomless pit or the abyss. It gets even more evident when CERN's actual mascot they worship is named the Destroyer. CERN is not only releasing what we know as particles, they are releasing these fallen angels because they are the particles. Are you following me on this? These particles, what CERN calls exotic beasts, are the actual fallen angels and beasts described in the Bible and also in the book of Enoch. If you have read the book of Enoch, Enoch was God's mightiest angel and was given all the secrets of creation, secrets that no other angel was able to hold on to. But you see, these characters that are found in the Bible, namely Enoch, the devil, and the fallen angels, were ways to characterize these principles of creation, i.e. particles, so that they could be remembered in a story form to be easily passed down from generation to generation. But you see, as time progresses, we only now see them just as stories. But back then, ancient civilizations were actually far more advanced than we even give them credit for, even comparable to us in our modern times. We don't even have the technology to rebuild the pyramids even if we wanted to. And I'm not talking about only in Egypt, but there are pyramids all around the world. These were ancient civilizations that were very advanced in math, astrology, medicine, and even construction. They rival even the technology of our days. They apparently even had a form of a computer back then. It's all very riveting when you actually discover what our world is all about. But we are not taught these things in school because they are labeled as occult, meaning they keep it hidden from you. They want you to be afraid to even look it up because you might be considered a conspiracy theorist or even a heathen. But they know, the elite knows, that if a society forgets its past, then they can keep reusing the same old tricks to repeat history again and again and again. They are doing the same thing right now. How many times has our civilization been laid to waste by our vanity and pride? These are not particles that you want to be messing around with. They obey God, and who are we to be tampering with His creation? Any malfunction, any mistake, could rip a hole in the very fabric of space and time. Don't quote me on that, because you can quote some of the most gifted and brilliant men of our time who said it. Stephen Hawking, Neil deGrasse Tyson, even the Pope declared it. I am only the messenger here. But I didn't want to make this video too long. I just wanted to give you a heads up to what they are doing at CERN. CERN is, without a doubt, our modern day Tower of Babel, where we have built up our own egos with pride and vanity to seek to replace ourselves as the gods of this world and of heaven, just like what Lucifer and his fallen angels sought to do at the very beginning. Because you see, time is not a linear concept. We have it all wrong. Time is cyclical and moves around in a circle. Otherwise, time could not be eternal. The beginning is literally the ending. And we are back to the very beginning of where our civilization first began. The same story of the Tower of Babel playing itself out all over again. It is no secret that our society has gone from bad to worse, from worshipping all manner of idols to becoming an adulterous generation and seeking to replace ourselves on God's throne. I say to you, cast out all manner of false worship and rid yourselves of all sin, for sin weighs you down and burdens your soul. Let Christ, which is the light, lift you up and unburden you, because this cycle is ending very soon, and if you want to make it to the next level of existence, you have to be light as a feather, when the angels weigh your soul in the balance of justice. 